starting from zero. It's, it's not a fun place to be, but when you look at the reality, it's where most of us start. Most of us start from zero, and I cannot tell you how many times I personally have started from zero. Uh, an entrepreneurial idea I had, a business concept I had, all starting from zero. It was just the idea, the passion, and just the relentless execution of this idea that I kind of like dreamed up in, in my brain. So this, this really comes from a lot of my experience as an entrepreneur and starting side gigs over and over and over again until I could find something that worked and was sustainable and actually made some sense and had like a legit business model. And also, don't get me wrong, this is not a scientific analysis that was done by a university study or anything. This is just my experience that I've had uh, you know, personally with being an entrepreneur and starting side gigs. So I've, I've come to find out that there's some very common phases that you go through and I just want to chart this out for you because it may or may not be helpful for you to see kind of your situation in somebody else but I always find it helpful to kind of relate to someone in, in this way especially because if you're starting a side gig from zero it can get kind of lonely. It can get, you know, at times where you feel like, hmm, should I really be doing this? Am I just crazy out of my mind? Here are the five phases on, uh, on what you go through on when you start a, a brand new side gig. Phase number one, the honeymoon phase. You cannot stop thinking about it. You wake up in the middle of the night, you're writing notes on your phone, rainbows, puppies, blue skies ahead. You're just completely enamored with your idea. And then you go on a shopping spree. You start buying memberships to stock photo sites. You start uh, buying new outfits. You start making these purchases one by one that you're like, yeah, this is going to get me closer and closer and closer to my goal. Okay, phase number two is what I like to call the busy bee phase. This is the phase where you start to get to work. You're rolling up your sleeves, you're throwing your hair up in a top knot like I like to do, and you are just completely in the zone. You are a productivity superstar. You are getting all the things done. You got millions of miles of, of, of a list happening and you're checking them off one by one, you are insanely productive. And then you find a little bit of your stride, you find a little bit of consistency, you start developing new habits maybe, maybe you start to get a handle on time management a little bit, that's always a difficult one, but you're starting to see a little bit of traction, you turn a corner and you finally are just like, yeah! this feels right, like I can get into this groove, like this is, I can jam to this. The next phase is phase number three, and this is what I like to call the Debbie Downer phase. Now, this phase right here always comes and just kind of bites me in the butt when I'm least expecting it, because I'll tell you a little story here, and it, it always catches me off guard, the Debbie Downer phase, and it just is super annoying. But you're on Google, you're looking something up for one of the tasks that you're doing, and you come across a, you know, a video, a, a post, or something from someone you really admire in business maybe, or an influencer, or whatever thingamaj thingamajig that's kind of like, you know, got you riled up. You see their content, you look at it, it's amazing, and then, inevitably, you're like, Man, my, my stuff sucks compared to this person! <laughs> like, what am I doing? This person is doing it way better than I ever could. Like, Debbie Downer phase, like, it's, it's coming at you at all different parts of your side gig. And so, you're really gonna have to wrestle with, especially with this part, phase number three, you're gonna have to start to really think about what are the things that are gonna keep you grounded and what are the things that are gonna help you get past that feeling because it happens 
a lot and it's going to happen over and over and over again until you get really good at identifying it early on and being like, nope, I know this is the Debbie Downer phase and I am not going to, I'm not going to feel bad about where I, I'm starting off in my journey. And now we're up to phase number four, which I call the comparison trap. The comparison trap really does go hand in hand with the Debbie Downer phase, just because when you're in Debbie Downer, comparison trap just, just happens. And there's a really great quote by Theodore Roosevelt, my boy Teddy. He wrote that comparison is the thief of joy. A little bit about me, if you don't know already, for 25 years I was a ballet dancer and I was constantly comparing myself to others. And this is, this is under like the microscope, right? You know, it's highly competitive. You are always, always critiquing yourself and you're always comparing yourself to others. Am I better than her? Am I better than him? And it's just like this endless vicious cycle. So comparison trap for me is just kind of like an easy thing for me to fall into because my brain has been so conditioned by the 25 years of intense uh, professional dancing. Just notice that these are the people, you're, the people that you're comparing yourself to, have so much more background, have so much more time invested, have so much more just experience in what they're doing, and so many lessons learned that maybe you haven't learned those lessons yet. It's one of those things that you just have to recognize that it's happening and move on as quickly as you possibly can because no good can come from the comparison trap because it will steal your joy and you will feel like crap. Here we are, we're at the last phase, phase number five. And this phase right here, I always have to remind myself, especially when I'm starting a brand new side gig from zero, I have to remind myself all the time, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Keep doing the thing that you're doing even when you don't want to do it. Even when it's difficult. Even when you maybe don't have time to or there's a million other things pulling you in a million other different directions. You have to keep swimming. Right? Finding Nemo, Dory, this quote, I mean it's it's everything because the more that you can practice stamina and endurance, the more that you train yourself, right? You're training yourself very similar to in a way that an athlete would train. You're training yourself to not get derailed and, and to allow your, your focus to really take hold of your project. So I really say this with, with a lot of love and a lot of conviction is to keep going because if you stop, you'll never know what could have been, right? I've had so many businesses that I started and I took them to the nth degree because I was like, let me just see if I tweak this one little thing and see if that works. And, but I actually did it and I tried and I kept going until it was just like, okay, yeah, this is, this is not a good business model. For phase number five, just keep swimming. It's a good one and it'll serve you well especially when you're starting a side gig from, from zero. So hey, those are all five phases. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Hit me up in the comment section. I love to chat about this stuff. And uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. That would be really, really helpful to me as well. I will continue to produce more uh, videos all about side gigs and, and how to make the most out of your side gig. P.S. I did a little redecorating of my office and hopefully this is a little bit more pleasing to the eye and kind of going with my side gig central theme. So uh, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down on the decor. I'd love to know what you think. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and uh, keep up that side hustle because it sure does look good on you.